Hey guys, I'm David. I'm Guy. And you're listening to Cafe with David and Guy. Welcome back. It's been a long time since we last spoke to all of you. I don't know, a long it's time. It's been a while. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Um, it's really good to be back. We are still kind of, I know, I not guess. Jet lagged, not jet lagged, but rebooting. Just rebooting. Yeah, that's great. We're rebooting right now. And I guess it's an appropriate way of putting it since <laughs> we just got back from the <laughs> Haiti Tech Summit. Right, right, right. Um, but I guess just to catch you guys up, if you hear noises in the background right now, it's because we're literally on a beach in Barbados where there are families. Um, and the waves are crashing. The wind so, is blowing. The and planes are landing. Fig- <laughs> <laughs> we figured that you wanted to be at a beach. Right. So we were like, well, It is summertime, right? Let's bring them to the beach. Hashtag Davila Cafe Summer. There you go. Go make good use of that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were on a bit of, I guess, it was a tour. Yes. Uh, I went to Washington for training. And, and I was in New York and in Washington, D.C. for a little bit. And then we, we both went to Haiti. So... It was a mixture of, I guess, for me, training and for you, business. For me, total business. Oh, we business, had some fun. Relaxation. Come on. I went with some friends on a camping trip. That was fun. That wasn't business. And of that course, was fun. he left me again. But that's okay, guys. You know how I feel I'm about sorry, this. I'm I sorry. talk about it all the time. Like, hey, you're always leaving. She's not telling you about the nights that she was with friends, dancing, and having a good time. That was, so. that was fun. That was- <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. So it's a two way street. This is fair. <laughs> you are fair. Um, but no, we wanted to kind of just do a catch up before we move on to the next session that we'll kind of be focusing on. Slightly different topics. Yes. Um, but for now, I guess for New York. What was your favorite part of being back My in New York? favorite part this time, honestly, when I went back to New York, because I was there three weeks prior to that, I just relaxed. See, see what I said about him leaving me I all the know, time, guys? I know, I <laughs> know. I came back to Barbados for three weeks and went right back. And before that, he was in Silicon Valley was, again right, right. for like three weeks. And I went to Seattle. What's up with that, it's, dude? It's been a lot of traveling. Right, so that's cool. to go back to what I was doing in New York, <laughs> um, I, just, I just relaxed. I kept a low profile. I got to see my grandmother. Whom abuelita we, whom we lovingly call abuelita if you if you don't know anything about my grandmother you must know that she comes from a long line of coffee agriculturalists just um, like us just like us she she's one of those figures in the family that everybody goes back to and, and we love her and, and while i was speaking while i was in new york i reached out to her um and i said grandma so i'm, I'm doing this i'm trying to roast coffee and she was giving me tips. She was literally giving me tips on how to roast coffee. Because, you know, I mean, Nicaragua. And, and maybe one of these days I'll, I'll release that footage. But uh, it was just great. Yeah, Nicaragua, her heritage. Uh, in, in the process, I was saying, so, so Grandma, this was the color of the, of the beans. This is what, what came out. She's like, no, you have to do it this way. Wait for the, after the first crack. This is what you're going to do. Add some secret recipe that I, you and know, we can't tell that you. We can't tell you. So, so it was. It's all natural, though. It's all natural. <laughs> but you know what? What's really exciting about doing Davi La Cafe and doing with all of you is sharing this family tradition that dates for generations and even centuries. You generations know? back, as they say, way back. Way back. You know, these are ancestors that came. From, some of them even came from Spain, um, moved to Nicaragua. So it's. It's a lot of history. Yeah, and I guess for me, since we're in the conversation of, I guess, talking about our grandma, my grandmother in Haiti. Your when grandmother's I, hilarious. Oh, oh, yeah, she's so funny. Oh, my when gosh. Gaina is talking to her grandmother, her grandmother is cracking up and having a good time. I'm like, come on. That's it's, the way you got to live. That's, that's the, the way, way to that's live. That's a life well lived. Yes. Uh, so she also, I remember her roasting coffee and making, grinding her coffee and serving all of us coffee in the morning. I know that in the U.S. it's probably like, why are you serving a five-year-old coffee right now? But in Haiti, it <laughs> was remember, normal. You dipped the bread inside <laughs> the coffee. Di- eh, so eh. That's what you did. <laughs> <Es salie. laughs> that was breakfast, you so know. <laughs> that's, you know, so that, that was kind of a part of my memories as yes. well, which is pretty cool. So we were in Haiti recently. We're going to be going back and forth, but while we're can in Haiti... Can you keep up? Can you keep up? I'm kidding, guys. We had, I'm just joking. We were, I, I was serving some Davi La Cafe, and a lot of the Haitians there were telling me, or Haitian-Americans, something even, they were saying, oh, when I was a kid, I would have the bread inside of the coffee. I said, you did that too, right? They said, yes. I said, so our, our cultures, while different, very similar. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of absolutely. really cool ways. A lot of parallels. I love, I love the places, like the nexus where, where we meet, the, those places where we really just like look at each other and we're like, mm-hmm. wow, 
We're not really all yeah, that different. We're not that Speaking different. Speaking of not being all that different as human beings, I was recently in Washington for training. Mm-hmm. Um, and while I love New York because of the bodegas, and I'm the Haitian American who's like obsessed with Where's American the food. Where's the bodega? But Haitian food is amazing too, guys. So all my Haitian listeners it's Caribbean don't. Food. Caribbean food, right? There you go. Overall, delicious. But for me, Washington, D.C. is really where I, I, I just. I recharge intellectually and I recharge in it spiritually as well mm. because that's our home base and that's where our church is and um, the people that we love that's and where care we met. for. That's where we met. They're in Washington, D.C. Right. And my colleagues, my amazing colleagues, I got to see a couple people from... We got to see people from Dhaka. So many people, yes. Um, Bangladesh. Got to go out eat and, and walk around. It was great. That was refreshing. You know, and I got to see some of my mentors, which for me is huge. It's mm. so important to have people that you look up to and people who are invested in your life, um, both professionally Definitely. and on a personal level. So that was really good for me. And while I was in D.C., I got to meet with some of my partners in coffee. That there was a lot go. of fun. Yes. It's always really good to, to speak to people inside of your your industry. Maybe you, you see them once in a while and you're not working with them every day. But t- touch base and say, hey, how are you doing things? What are you doing? How What's working for you? What isn't working for you? Um, in conversations with one of my partners, I said, so year one, what were you doing in year one? And we kind of laughed at the same struggles that we, were, we either faced or the kind of things that we can relate to. And, and Absolutely. that's really exciting to say, hey. Maybe you're in year five in, in a different season, but there there is hope. There's always more. There's you know? always more. <laughs> you you got to keep working. The, the hustle, struggle is real. The struggle is real, but it is worth it. And every time I meet an entrepreneur, every time I meet a family that's saying, you know, we have a small business, I said, go for it. Do it. It might be a lot of work, but it's worth it. And on that note, um, there's a special announcement. Special announcement. That you're kind of holding back a little yeah, bit, right? a little bit, because... <laughs> I'm going to start ironing that out as, or it's already ironed out, but I'm going to start releasing that information shortly. But soon enough, attention, everyone, if you're in the DMV, you'll be able to receive Davila Cafe on tap at a restaurant near you. Well, I'll leave you, I'll leave you with that. I think that's even saying a lot. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous, so stay tuned. guys. We're really excited about this partnership. Um, Not just because of like I guess I mean I I just I love the people involved yes. in this partnership so for I'm really us, that's excited everything, for that you know um, people first definitely mm-hmm. that's our mentality and that's why you guys are also part of our community we there want go, yeah. everyone to be part of this this is not just uh, you know David and Gaina show this is a, a show for everyone and you know we always invite you guys to share your experiences with us whether it's by email mm-hmm. Davila Cafe at, at gmail.com, gmail.com. Yes. or even on Instagram I love it when I read your notes and read your thoughts about what what we're talking about so recently that's always a really friend cool. wrote said you know this is what inspires me I'm journaling I said Gr-, we responded and we said great do that keep doing that it's important to get your thoughts out there right put them on paper if you have dreams, if you have goals, put them on paper. Absolutely. They're, they're, you're more likely to do them once they're written down. And speaking of dreams and goals, uh, I kind of want to chat briefly about Haiti, Haiti and our was, experience in Haiti. Yes, Haiti was amazing. Again, I told you this podcast was going to be a reboot. There's so much to talk about. There's not enough time. Right. But <laughs> Haiti, we were there for about eight days. Uh, we met with family, friends. We got to taste coffee from different parts of Haiti. We got to get our, our coffee from the farm. It was it was a lot of fun. You met with your mentor. We met with awesome. my mentor. Uh, tasted, yeah. It was a, just great. It was great. And a lot of culture, a lot of art, visiting lot of galleries. Tech. A lot of tech. <laughs> That's the really cool part, that we're taking coffee. We're, coffee meets tech. Um, not just this Davi La Cafe meet art, but also the tech world. We were at the Haiti Tech Summit. I was there as a mentor. Gaina got to present as a speaker on one of the panels, on the diaspora panel. It was pretty She cool. did a phenomenal well, job. Thank you, honey. She did a great thank job. Thank you. Um, it was really <laughs> cool. One thing is to live with, with, with each other. Yeah. Another thing to is see, to see it and, and to see you shining in that moment. I was. I said, no, that is my wife. And I am proud of her. Yes. I was proud of you as well, dude. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're totally bringing you into our moment. <laughs> but no, Haiti Tech Summit was incredible. And I just want to applaud everyone who participated and organized even to the attendees i mean people who are there traveling from all over the world to just come and learn about how haiti is going to be the next hub for innovation in the caribbean like who would have thought right who were some of the most important speakers there um i mean i i I enjoyed listening to all the speakers to be frank only because each of them provided different perspectives some people were a part of the diaspora others were like literally 
on the ground, locals making a difference, game changers right on the ground. Others were from California. Yeah. I mean, just everywhere. And it was really cool to get to see um, the CEO of, of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, come down and speak and really just see how enamored he was by Haiti. Mm -hmm. And then meeting people like Mark Allen, who's, you know, the CEO of Bunge, who's really trying to make a difference in Haiti and trying to create a space That's where entrepreneurs yep. can yep. grow um, and where people can really be innovative, you know, without totally. fear and without any kind of, of um, shame. So it was really and cool. And having that ecosystem where they can grow and thrive. Absolutely. Inside, you know, so. Mentors that are going to say, you know what, you have a brilliant idea. This is how you can make it a reality. And when you're in Haiti, being an entrepreneur is almost synonymous to being Haitian. That is so, oh my gosh, that's like, so good. You yeah. go through the streets, whether it's somebody who's going to serve you a cup of, of sugar cane juice or, or somebody who's creating a craft. There's so the much to artists, I mean, it's just a world. It's like it's like this flurry of mm -hmm. activity constantly. Yes. But the activity in and of itself is art yeah. in the midst of, of, you know, what can seem for some to be just total chaos. And overwhelming. Yeah, like it could be yeah. totally overwhelming chaos. But no, there, there's like this beauty to it. And there's this... Um, Oh, there's just the art is just so inspiring, and, and the people. And there's joy to life. You say it in French really well. Joie de vivre. Yes. Like when you're in Haiti, it's contagious. You literally feel the sense of hope mm -hmm. despite all the challenges that these individuals are facing. And so that's that was really and, important. And that to inspires us. us as a company. Um, and and as individuals, as I mean, individuals, <laughs> totally. I mean, on, on a very personal. Um, Guy is always bring it down. Bring it down. Well, I mean, no. I guess it's because I want. I, I want to honor the fact that we are a bivocational family, yes. and as millennials, that that can be very difficult at times. Yeah. You know, to on the one hand have this person who's a diplomat, and on the other hand have a person who's growing a business and straight up entrepreneur. And I want people to know that, you know, this is possible. It's not like, you know, we're not like this odd couple. We're not superhumans either. Exactly. Right. No, absolutely not. So anyway. And, and to, before we wrap things up, we do want to announce and, and highlight our latest uh, campaign. campaign, which is titled Café Fait la Fosse. Fait la Fosse. Can you say that? Café Fait la Fosse. Café Fait la Fosse. And just real quick, Café Fait la Fosse, um, well, you, you and a good friend of ours. Yes, and a good friend of ours. We coined this term. In Haiti, the national slogan is... Please say it for us. It is L'Union Fait la Fosse. There's a plane flying over us on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> L'Union Fait la Fosse, which means like... Oh, sorry. Unity is strength. <laughs> yes. La unidad fortalece, right? So you can say it in Spanish. Yes. There you go. We've got all the different languages in our home. Um, and so, yeah, that's what the campaign is about. It's really about community. You spoke about it eloquently, babe, so you can run with it. So basically, unity is strength. Well, there's also strength in coffee because we believe coffee, coffee is the catalyst for great conversations, right? Which builds community. Which builds community. So as we're building a community, um, we're reminding everyone within this community that café fait la force. There's and strength in community. There's strength in coffee. There's, a, there's strength in, in what we're doing here. And the strength is simply, I think, like, when I think of the coffee, Café Fait La Fosse, it's really a means to an end. Because, as you said earlier, you know, yes. coffee allows for conversation because you're, you know, you're drinking a cup Absolutely. and you're talking to friends or maybe people that you don't even know or people that you may even disagree with mm -hmm. respectfully and in a civil manner. You can engage with them and through that maybe build something, build a bridge that didn't exist before. Correct. Um, we hope that you guys follow along with this. and Definitely. We, we have... won't tarry much longer. It's no. getting very, very... Well, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> Before we head out, we'd like to let you all know that we do have some really cool uh, people joining us on the podcast coming soon. Uh, we won't share too much on the details. You'll have to wait and listen. Um, and before we head out, please check out. What are we drinking? We are drinking the Esteli. Esteli from Nicaragua. Uh, definitely check it out. It's one of my favorite uh, roasts right now. It's very sweet, very smooth. It's uh, grown in volcanic it's soil. It's grown in volcanic soil, and we know that you're going to appreciate it. So as we head out, we're listening to Bayo. By, by Michael Bourne. He's an incredible Haitian artist. American, Haitian, American Haitian artist. Haitian, American artist. <laughs> Be sure to check him out. And until we see you all soon, hasta luego, café. De la Fos. Ciao. Je vais poser pas sujet qui a souillé, deux que des pochés et pas ce qu'on te marre, toi